Good evening, everybody. This is Captain Tinsley, Salty Abandon with a Salty Podcast, where it's always a great day to talk about sailing. And this is episode 14. So I have some guests, and it looks like they're having a little bit of technical difficulty. It just occurred right before we went live. <laughs> Everything was great up until then. So while they're working on that, I think I'm... Uh, uh, if you can hear me, Krista, just go out of the studio and come back in. Um, while they're working on that, and, and I hope they will, they will work that out. Um, I asked, I asked a question on social media a couple of days ago, and I was going to do this at the end, and maybe I will if they come back in. Um, I asked everybody. Well, goodness. Here they are, but there's nobody there. That's a shame. So we'll wait and see if their camera starts working. Um, and you might want to use your phone. Let's see. Try using your phone. And while they're working that out. Oh, here comes another one. Oh, here we go. Okay. <laughs> All right. I did it with the phone. Okay. That's crazy. Like everything was, uh-oh. She, she went out again. <laughs> well, I'll go ahead and get my commercial out of the way. Um, I want to introduce tonight's sponsor, which is me. And let's see if I can pull that up. So in case you didn't know, my name is Tinsley Myrick with Remax of Orange Beach. I sell Gulf Front condos, Gulf Front homes, even non-waterfront homes and condos, Gulf Shores, Orange Beach, Alabama, and Perito Key, Florida. So even if you're not in the market, please, please uh, help me out and, and refer. We get a lot of people from all over the country, especially the Southeast and the Midwest and other parts too. So if you know anybody looking for property down here at the beach, please give them my name. Also, one more thing. If you like this podcast, I also have one on Thursday nights at six o'clock live at Getting Beachy Podcast, and we talk about, it's a real estate slash lifestyle po podcast, at Get Ch Getting Beachy Podcast. So, okay, so they came in, and now they're, again, the, the camera's not working, so I will now cover you know, the question I put on social media. Um, I said, let me put this up there. Hey, sailors, what are five essential items you take with you cruising that people might not think of. And I thought I would cover the answers at the end because I want you all to stay till the end of this video. But uh, Krista and Bill are having trouble. Now, Krista and Bill are very exciting. They just bought an Island Packet 485, a 2005 Island Packet 485, and they have a great story. I, I'm hoping we get to tell it. <laughs> um, they they picked it up in Texas and they are now in they are now in uh here we go. Here we go. Oh, here we go. All right. Okay. Oh right. I gotta find out a good spot to put the put the phone now, because we're on a phone. <laughs> yeah. That's good. That's good. That'll work. That'll work. <laughs> Better than nothing. I'm gonna bring in. I was just talking away here, just uh, we you could, work we it out. Show you, and we were okay. up on the screen, but you couldn't see us. Oh, okay. Like All I was right. there, and I was going, "Hello." <laughs> yeah, just I couldn't hear anything or see anything. Yeah. Um, so you saw the question I put up because I want to. I want to put this up and then cover it later because we want people to stay to the end of the video. So. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> um. Hey, sailors, what are five essential items you take with you cruising that people might not think of? And I'm going to show you at the, towards the end of this video what some of the answers I got. And then I would love to hear some of your answers as well, because anybody that's been gone even you know, on one trip, there's always something you're like, oh, my gosh, I'll never forget that thing again. Right. Do <laughs> you're not you want us to do each because I have totally different things than he does, I'm sure. Sure. You can do as many as you want. <laughs> so but first, we're going to start with and you got you have time to think about that. Um, we're going to start with and I already told a little bit about that. You just bought the 2005 Island Packet 485. You picked it up in Texas. And you uh, sailed to um, Panama City, where you're staying for a little bit longer. Is that right? 
he actually sailed it. Um, we ended up driving to Texas because we have two dogs. And so we had a van in Texas. Uh, okay. So he ended up sailing. i um, trying to find a good, there we go. Uh, he ended up sailing with a friend and I drove over to Panama City from Texas. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. So who is this friend, Bill? A uh, good friend of mine, uh, Daniel Snap. He is also oh. an island packet owner. You probably I remember. To him. Yeah. 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 Yeah, he's like so, a brother-in-law, right? Uh, he's well, he's like a brother, but yeah, he's not family. He's just a good friend. Um, okay. Yeah, so we met we met Daniel and his wife Melissa in the Bahamas last year on our Island Packet 380 that we had last year. Right. Okay. And so, he's going to be on the podcast. Yeah. Thankfully, yeah. thanks yeah. for hooking us up. Yeah. He's yeah. um. They're, they're scheduled for April 10th. So. Awesome. Cool. Um. So um. Tell us where you're going after this and then we'll get into some details on the boat uh well well where we're headed from here we're gonna explore the west coast of florida mm -hmm. love it so essentially you know we thought about just skipping right through and going straight to the keys and then work our way back up the east coast as time allows because we essentially have to get back to maine right. that's where we live um but we've decided to spend the most of our time here on the west coast just kind of seeing the spots that everybody else seems to miss because everyone, you know, they generally just shoot right straight for the keys. Uh, yeah. There's a lot of great nature preserves up in this area. Got to witness some of them today while I was up fishing with Daniel. Um, and it was, it's just so many, so many nice things. We're going to go to Port St. Joe, I think first. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then from there, we're going to take the inside route up through and come out in Carabel. Mm -hmm. Apalachicola and then Apple. Carabel. Yeah. Yep. 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 So we're just going to explore that because there's some really nice wilderness in there that we kind of want to see. We don't want to skip by it by being offshore. Um, right. We may go into Apalachicola and spend a day there. Yeah. Not sure. Well, you're going to have to pass right by it. And if uh, this is my route that I've taken many times. So if you need any advice on where to stay or anything um, gladly gladly we'll yeah. take yeah. it yeah well maybe Definitely. maybe we can have another uh video meeting off, yes. off camera and you can do go because yeah we would love that yeah i know the route all the way to the keys i, I can tell you all that my favorite places who has the best bathrooms everything <laughs> <laughs> Weird, right? um, i'll have the best bathroom so yeah, we have yeah the best well bathroom, that's so. true i do too now but yeah and and some great anchorages and everything so yeah, I well, love the West Coast of Florida. I love those this whole Gulf Coast all the way down to the Keys. It's the area that I travel the most on my boat, so I know it really well. And you know, I've I've sailed, I've gone to some marinas, and then next year I'll go to a different one. I have my some that I always go to. But anyway, I'll yeah, be, I'll be. I'll be glad to help. <laughs> yeah. So our broker that helped us sell our 380, Vanessa Lin Lindsley, um, good friend of ours and yours. Um, yes. We yes. want to bring this boat to her so she can see it because she really helped us get this. And she helped us sell our old one, get the new one. And she's just uh, a great friend. But we want to yes. like show her the fruits of her labor. Yeah. Right. Shout out to Vanessa. She's been a great friend to me, too. And. Yeah. You can ask her anything about anything, even I about medical it. stuff. And when I broke my ankle, <laughs> yeah, anything, you know, Undoubtedly. Like an encyclopedia of knowledge and the best personality you've ever met in your life. So yeah. I love her. Yeah, I do so, love her. Yeah. Like any, yeah. any kind of boat you could say, what about that boat over there? She'll tell you the history of the boat and what the, the, the pros and cons of whether it's a power boat or a sailboat. It's incredible. Isn't yeah. It? She's a great person to have as a broker too. If you're looking for a boat because she, Buy or sell. she right, she's not biased really. She has her favorites, but she's very knowledgeable in everything. And she's not really like, Oh, I only like this kind of boat. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And she can tell you the pitfalls and the and the pros of any of those boats. So yeah, yep. she'll never yeah. say I told you so. <laughs> oh yes, she will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, she's really good at uh, educating the buyer and the seller. Um, right. Just very very knowledgeable and like Crystal just said, in all makes and models, and she'll do right. the most research. I mean, she is such a great person in general, but the amount of research that she did for us in in so many ways and so you know three different boats that we've dealt with with her um yeah just i won't go anywhere else she's my girl for sure oh, yeah you hear that vanessa vanessa lindsley she's in key west if you need her help 
Edward yeah, Yard Sales. Still. Edward Yard Sales. She's the greatest. Um, but we hope we have some friends. We met Barbara Meek down there. I don't know if she's yep. on or not, but she was. We would love to see her again. Um, right. and there's just some people that we would just want to go and say hi to. So we're our hope is to go to Key West, but we'll see what happens. Yeah, well, marathon's great too. I mean, if you yeah. want I can suggest a route. So, but we'll get to that. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so okay. We've met before. Yes. <laughs> Tell us about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So several years back, like 2000. 20? 17, 18. 19, 20. Yeah. I don't even know. When I broke my ankle is 2020. Okay. Yeah. No, okay. So actually, 2000... it, was, it might have been 2021. That's when I actually broke it. It was yeah. whenever Early. you fell off your bike. April 2021. Okay, so we met yeah. you then um, in, 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 Key West, <laughs> in Key West at Stock Island. Yep. Yeah. We had a boat there that um, we had a catamaran at that point in time, a Leopard 44, which was a wonderful boat. Very Great nice sailor. Boat, yeah. We had a lot, really enjoyed it. It was a nice boat. Um, but I remember being there and I remember seeing Salty Abandon and Vanessa mm -hmm. was working on it. Man, that thing, every time I go near that boat, I couldn't stop talking her ear off about that thing. And how beautiful it was and how set That's up awesome. you know, so nicely configured. I'm like, man, everything you need right here in this little. And then I started learning more about Island packets and I swore, I was like, I'm going to have one of those someday. And uh, here I am, you know, I was sitting on a leopard 44, which is, you know, three times, who knows <laughs> a much larger boat. Let's just say that. Right. Yeah. But, yeah. um, you know, I just I just like the uh, intimacy of and the quality of the Island Packet brand. I, I like the it, it's more than quality. It's also safety. You know, the, we could go on about this for hours, really. Right. But the yeah. more you learn, the more, you know, at that point. But, yeah, I, I thought we were going to end up with a, you know, a 27 or a 320 or, you know, and then the more I started looking, um, we found that the 380 was a pretty good bargain boat. The Island right. Packet 380. So we ended up buying an Island Pack. Well, we sold the 44 Leopard after we had met you. Uh, and then here we are. Amazing. <laughs> and here we are full circle. I haven't talked to you really <laughs> since 21. And here we are full yeah. circle. On right. an That's Island right. Packet, mostly because of you. Because he got like, he was like. The influence. <laughs> <laughs> that is so cool. And I had somehow lost that that knowledge until you, when we did our tech check earlier today, you reminded me and I was like, Oh my gosh, that is so cool. And uh, yeah, that was a bad day for me, but yeah. <laughs> I'm glad that was that made, is that what made you remember? It was because the girl yeah. that was on that boat <laughs> broke her ankle, had to be life flighted to Miami. <laughs> well, I mean, it was pretty dramatic was pretty for you dramatic and for, for us too, you know, yeah. we were kind of worried about you and, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you were a friend of Vanessa's and we're, you know, it's a small circle of people down there, you know? Right. Right. Well, that's really cool. So, um, yeah. So you're going to maybe stay at Stock Island. It's not likely. Oh, okay. No, it's not likely. Uh, we can't afford Stock Island. I don't think <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we just bought a 485. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're, I mean, it's cheaper. We're anchor, anchoring. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. So you'll have to tell me where you're anchoring. Um, Stock Island used to be the cheaper place, but I know everything's gone up down there. Yeah, so. last, last I heard, it was uh, on the upwards of 80s a foot. $80 a foot. What? Oh For a monthly. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Okay. Well, and to be honest with you, you know, in the short time we've owned this boat already, um, so our trip from Texas to here, we ended up stopping in Pensacola for an overnight because mm -hmm. we knew the weather was chasing us down. And <clears throat> after several days of beating into the wind, it was to the point where we were, I think, about 90 miles from Panama City uh, and like 45 miles from Pensacola. And we were just losing steam. We were only able to push like four and a half knots against 28 knots of wind. And the seas that accommodate 28 knots of wind on your nose, you know, yeah. we were, Daniel and I were joking. Oh, oh here's somebody. Oh gosh. What is Texas sailing like? It's like, it's not commonly discussed as an option. It's usually Florida, New England and Chesapeake. 
thanks for coming back, Nathan. I just lost them. So, um, yeah, I've never been uh, east, uh, 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 west of um, Gulf Shores out in the Gulf. Um, everything else is like Gulf Shores east. So uh, that's a good question. As soon as they come back, maybe we can ask them. <laughs> hey, Nathan, how's it going? Uh, let's see. I guess we could talk about some of the answers about sailors. What are five essential items you, you take that cruising people might not think of? Okay. So I got some good answers. Uh, Captain Vinny said extra water, batteries for flashlights, tide charted for next location. Unless you're in the Caribbean with only 12 inch rise and fall your next five-day weather window, and TP. Blaine Parks says a ukulele. <laughs> That's a typical answer for Blaine. And if you uh, you can uh, watch a former uh, episode with Blaine, he is a yacht mover. Um, Dallas Shaw says a Geiger counter. That's an interesting answer. Uh, Billy, who is my mechanic... And he does everything on on a boat or or a car or even a here we here they come or even a um, a motorcycle. He said, "I think he was just answering my question about where to find a bell." Um, they're trying to get back in. Here's Michael Eads says phone number for Cito, and my answer was and Towboat US. I have both. I learned the hard way that each of these franchises is not created equal uh wherever you go cito is my favorite here they are sorry sorry i won't touch <laughs> anything ever again i promise <laughs> what happened i was trying to look at the chats to see if i could see who if, like if there was any questions that were coming but I oh, oh i'll put them up there there it's at the bottom of your screen you see <laughs> And I know it, I don't. That's what I was trying to do. Oh, okay. Well, I'll read it to you. Okay. So Nathan says, what is Texas sailing like? It's not commonly discussed as an option. It's usually Florida, New England, or Chesapeake. So Bill, you want to tell us about what it's like to sail from Texas? Sure. Um, navigationally speaking, it's terrifying. <laughs> really? I think so. Um, <laughs> I have limited sailing experience. I've only been sailing since about 2017 and yeah. limited from basically New England to the Bahamas and then from the panhandle of Florida to the Keys. Mm -hmm. um, so all that's of that, that's, that's a pretty large area, but Texas is its own group. Uh, the Galveston Bay is a very big bay, but it's very shallow and there's a lot of stuff sticking out of it. Oh. There's all sorts of stuff. And the shipping channel that goes through there, it's the largest shipping channel I've ever seen. Um, Bigger than still, Tampa? Uh, I would say, I, I can't say for sure, because I don't remember going through Tampa, but I've been through um, the Hudson Bay. I've seen... Um, oh, okay. You know, I've done I, all the East Coast. Cause all, we, all the East Coast stuff. You right. know, even like... Um, Who's uh, the big one? The cruise line terminal down in Florida, Fort Lot, not Fort, La Fort Lauderdale, mean? no, like Cocoa Beach area and all the Carnival cruises oh, down Port by Canaveral. Fort Canaveral. That okay. was busy. I remember going through that at night. That seemed a little sketchy, but no, Houston, I think is probably the biggest shipping port in the country. It's huge, okay. huge, huge, huge. Um, but sense. things sticking out of the water navigationally. I mean, there's oil rigs everywhere. If you look at a well, map, is there a of nice the Gulf, channel? Is it? Do they keep the channel clear? The channel's clear. Yeah, but the channel's okay. full of large vessels, like oh, I see. Oh, you know, yeah. nine hundred foot vessels, and they're stacked up. They're one after the other, nonstop. And there are oil, and, and there are oil rigs out there that are lit and marked with, um, you know, bells on them. And then there are a ton that aren't. So I wasn't super excited about doing the crossing because we had heard and everything that we read all said you got to take the shipping channel out a hundred miles and then at the hundred mile mark at that point in time you can start figuring out where in florida you want to go because you'll be safe from all the rigs and i was like that wow sucks. that's a long ways it, it's <laughs> wow. a, Just before you can you, make a left turn <laughs> i'll tell you what we did you know the the whole 
the trip all the way from Texas to Louisiana, uh, the, the Mississippi River was there's so many oil rigs. And I mean, you can't possibly count them all. And when you have your chart plotter up, you know, it, it's very challenging. This time of the year in the Gulf of Mexico is challenging anyway because you have to deal with fog. You have to deal with storms that are rapidly changing rough. all the it's time. Yeah. You know, the sea state changes all the time. You know, we were out there and it seemed like every time it got dark, it would get so foggy you couldn't see past your Dodger. Yeah. You know, so you're relying on radar, your chart plotter, and then I have a backup tablet that I use as a chart plotter as well. Um, you know, and, and the water AIS, depths aren't significant. Yeah. Yeah, we have AIS, of course. Um, but man, oh man, I think navigationally speaking, I would rather never ever do that again, ever, for any reason. It's just so, there's too many things to hit. Right. And he ended up taking an easy route because yeah. we ended up blessedly meeting a captain when we were in Texas on the docks. And he runs from Pensacola, Panama City over to Kima, Texas all the time. Once a month. And he told us, no, 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 you don't have to do that whole what everybody says you have to do. Just stay three miles offshore. Yeah, between oh. one and five miles offshore the whole way. And uh, that sounds better. He, so that's what he did. <laughs> it, that's what we did. So that sounds there were a lot times, better. Yeah, I mean, it was it was good. There were times when we were much further than that. You know, beyond when we got past the Mississippi, we just made a straight shot. Um, and there were other times when we were further out. But yeah, I would say. Um, Texas has a lot of great things to offer. The the resources there are phenomenal. <laughs> okay. You want to get, get your boat repaired or sure. fixed or upgraded wow. with anything? It's Houston. Yeah. It's Houston. That's the place to go, take, undoubtedly. Take a wild guess at what we, um, you know how. Uh, oh, large, for example. Yeah. yeah. Take a wild guess at how much it costs to have our boat fully detailed and waxed and buffed. And they did all the stainless. Yeah. They, so they washed it. They buffed and waxed it, polished the stainless, took them three full days, and they did the enclosure, the whole thing. Take a while, guess what they charge for a 52 foot? $20,000. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Come on. Well, I, well, is it the take two? What's that? He did not know. They did not. They, they didn't, didn't do the they, take. Okay. The no. So they no. fully detailed it, buffed, 5, waxed. 5000 is that your final answer? That's your final answer? Because that's what it should be. Oh, okay. $550. $550. What? And I know. The, and the guy spent three solid days here. No. Doing our book. $550. They washed it by hand with a mitt. Like That guy could come over here and make a killing by and charge more. Oh yeah, my we're God. feeding them breakfast and coffee and all that. So I so, six so, packs, twelve packs. You better believe it. <laughs> this is the place to go if you want any boat work done. Any boat work. Well, it? I thought I thought maybe the teak was thrown in there too, because that's where the cost really gets. He would have he would have done our teak. Now we have um a well, seven hundred and fifty dollars. <laughs> it would yeah. be eight hundred dollars for him to do our teak. Eight hundred? Yeah, for just him to restain it. Just for him to, we have Simcoe, it's a non- uh, it's not a glossy finish. It's a it's a yeah. it's a satin finish, Simcoe product. I need to go to Houston. I'm just taking a boat ride over there. <laughs> it's, it'd be well, worth it. You heard it here on the Salty Podcast. If you're gonna get your boat worked on, you need to go to Houston. Go to Kima. No Texas. joke. No, no joke. joke. Canvas just, is cheap. Everything is inexpensive over there. Yep. And just so we covered, there is a the the intercoastal goes all the way to Houston. But you're probably your mast is too tall, right? It was 63 and a half. I I, I wouldn't. Mine's 48. Mine's a 48. I, yeah, Mine's I wouldn't a 48. Need a coastal. Um, there are there are only in my new boat, my 320. There's two bridges in the intercoastal between here and uh, Destin that I can't. It's too close. It's like 50. I'm not doing it. You know, so yeah. I have to. Get, I used we've to be heard, able to go. Go ahead. We've heard from a lot of people to not do the intercoastal going because of the Mississippi. You got to jump into the Mississippi and come out, and it's brutal. It's awful. Like there's the ships don't even care, right? No. There's a lot of commercial traffic. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Nathan says, What's his name? I'll fly him to Washington. <laughs> <laughs> Me his too. name is Nathaniel. Nathaniel. We have his card. Oh my yeah. God. Okay. Yeah. So um, Nathan just, uh, 
message me and then I'll pass it on to you. Or you can just go salty abandoned at Gmail and I'll make sure that uh, I, we, we hook you up. So that is cool. Yeah, that's smart, Nathan. You're a smart man. Um, okay, so I want I do want to show some pictures, and these are the pictures you sent me today. Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay, so you're not showing on camera here because I want to make this bigger. Mm -hmm. But, uh, okay, here's the new boat, EOS. So EOS. EOS? Is that EOS. how you say it? EOS. Right, okay. Yeah, correct. Tell us quickly about the name. Do you want to tell it? You, want to you go ahead. Tell okay, it. so it's actually, um, it's a funny story. The boat came came that way, and we really think that with she... With this name. With this name, and we think that maybe she was even, like, from the factory with this name, but we can't confirm that or not, but... We haven't confirmed it. Um, we didn't, I didn't really like the name. I w was like, we got to change the name. I don't like it. I don't know what it means. I don't like it. It's weird. Um, <laughs> we always have had our boat names be girls. So we had our first catamaran was Aurora. That was named after our dog. Plus she's the goddess of the dawn and we love that. So that was our first name. And then our next name boat was Salacia. And she was um, Greek goddess. the Greek goddess of the sea. So um, I did some research onto what Eos means. And Eos is actually also the Greek goddess of the dawn. Okay. All Roman. right. A Roman well, Bill, goddess of the dawn. So she, so you, uh, her other name is Aurora. Okay. <laughs> so you can also, you can contact Bill Bolin and get the ancestry on this boat. You know that, oh, right? Cool. No, I didn't yeah, know that. He he was on a couple of weeks ago and he has um islandpacketancestry.com, I think. Oh wow. And he'll go pull the actual file from the um from the factory. Oh cool. That would be and awesome. He'll he he discovered that my boat was damaged in a hurricane way back when, and uh, so it, it's interesting what what might be back there in the history. So yeah. here it's a, a what do you call it a center cockpit, right? Yes, correct. And um, this is really cool because let me see if I can get there's you. Look at that swim platform. That is awesome. yeah, that was our one of our selling features. So this made me have deck envy. <laughs> <laughs> yep. This is incredible. This, I mean, talk about comfort at anchor. <laughs> oh Those are Adirondack chairs. Yeah, they're blow no, up Adirondack chairs. Yeah, Daniel yeah. and Melissa Snap own those, and they let us borrow them for our uh, time together. We had six grown adults on the boat. We went out for four nights, and they let us borrow those. And I think I think they might need to stay. <laughs> This is just a lot of deck space. I told um, Radine and Hayden that I had hull envy after I saw what Max Yachts did, made their shiny hull, which mine now is getting. It's in, it's on the hard right now. Now I have deck envy. <laughs> this is incredible. <laughs> it's impressive. Okay, and there's, there's your uh, enclosure there. Mm -hmm. And here we have, um, I'm going to take you off so I can see the dog. <laughs> Look at that baby. Oh, Look yeah. at that baby. <laughs> She's like, are you okay. talking about me? <laughs> so cute. And uh, that's a very nice salon. Yes, and, it is. Uh, yeah, and, and we're that, sitting over on the um, starboard side, which uh, right side, the yeah, the right side. We're sitting right side. on that settee now. We have it pulled out into a shea, big shea couch because it's just so cushy. Okay. All right, and uh, so and the camera is coming from the um, from the what? Sorry. The camera right is is in the um. We're we're in the starboard side. No, I mean we're, the camera on the screen is is in the. Uh, I can't think of the word. <laughs> where you, uh, you 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 where you do your station? Yeah, that's it. That's it. <laughs> yes, yes. I'm standing Gosh. in the navigation station. Yes. 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 Um, here's the, is that a walkthrough galley? It sure is. It is. Yep. yep. And see the bedroom in the back. Mm -hmm. And this is the, the, the front, the V birth or the, the, aft. This, that's aft. The, aft. Oh, oh, that's aft. Aft, that's aft. Cabin, and then you have the, um, the forward bathroom. So they're okay. mixed. But. I may have missed. Okay. There's the, there we go. And so you've got the extra cabin. With uh, the washer and dryer, huh? Yeah, it? no cabin. Usually there's bunks. We have a laundry. Right, right. okay. And um, Bill's pride and joy, we have the engine. <laughs> yes. Tell us about the engine. Tell, what, what, how many horsepower? It's 100 horsepower turbo diesel. Wow. Um, 
and when you're looking at it you're looking at the back of it here by the looks of the picture it's small because it's on my phone but yeah it's it's uh, it was well taken care of before we bought it and it'll continue to be well cared for for sure uh, yeah, you probably should have put the floor in there because I'm sure you could eat off of it. Is that correct? You, you certainly <laughs> can, yeah. Like I said to others, if you drop your sandwich in there, you better wipe the floor up when you pick up your sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's pretty impressive there. Okay, uh, let's put you, let's go back to, all right, no, how do I get you back up there? Okay, here we go. Yay. Okay. Um, let's see. The Tacky Cat. We saw a picture of the Tacky Cat. Tell me about the Tacky Cat. You know, I have a Tacky Cat and I love the Tacky Cat. You do? You do. Nice. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I've got the eight and a half foot one and you you clearly have one that's longer. So, <laughs> yeah. How do you like it? So far, I love it. So we needed a dinghy and I wasn't um, down. He had come down to visit with his father to, to stay on the boat and he needed to get a dinghy. So um, I put him in charge of picking it out. I thought I had a picture. And so he can tell you it. why he picked the Takakat. So the Takakat uh, works well for us for a lot of reasons. One, we travel with dogs, two dogs that like to be in the water, but I also like to bring them to shore. Here's one of them right here. <laughs> That's a sweet lap. baby. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the other one is, is double her size. So they both like to be, they both like to be with us all the time. So I take them to shore quite often to go to the bathroom. Primarily when we're, when we're on our boat, we're anchored out somewhere. Staying at the dock or a mooring ball is usually not our idea of a good time. We like to be off the grid type of thing. Um, so the tacky cat works good because they can get on and off of it very easy from the stern. Uh, also, when we approach land, I can kind of nose right up to shore and they don't even have to get their feet wet. They can just jump right off on the shore, jump back on, no problem. So that works. In addition to that, if we're out in the water and they're swimming, I can pull them out of the water and onto oh, yeah. the bow of the boat instantaneously. There's it, there's right. no restriction. I have to pull them over a giant tube. And, and it's, it's kind of a tougher bottom. The bottom of it is uh, it's probably Based okay for the claws. Boat. Yeah, yeah it's a, it can be it can be used as a paddleboard. That's right. Right, right. So they're they have good traction on their feet. They're not slipping and sliding in a V hole. You know, it's a flat bottom boat, so they're not sliding around. They're not getting banged up. They can get on and off of it very easily. And in addition to that, Krista and I we both like to snorkel a lot. So last year when we snorkeled, and we had a traditional dinghy. Every time I got her out of the water, I would have to grab a hold of her upper body. <laughs> and help pull her over the tube. Yeah, yeah. Well, if you that's have a little a hernia, bit of a workout, yeah. It, yeah. It is, yeah. Well, I thought about hernia. She has a hernia that's inoperable for oh. a lot of reasons, but pulling her up over a tube and having her land on her abdomen isn't is less than ideal. Yeah, right. Gotcha. So we can yeah, pull her up the bow now instead. What I like about it is when I make a crossing, I can break that thing down in about in two bags. And stick it inside the boat, and it's not swinging, tearing things up. And uh, and even though it, it can be a challenge, you know, putting it, getting it out and onto the dock, I usually get a deckhand to come. You know, hey, can you give him twenty bucks? Help me get it on there. It's usually the engine is the problem. I need some dude to help me get it up on the on the wreck. Right. right. But I can break that thing down myself and stick it back in the boat when I'm done. So yeah. Right. At the beginning of the trip and the end of the trip. Yeah. He had it. He had it uh, stored in our garage, and it like disappeared. Yeah, it, that, I like it for the same reason. We can our, break our it down. Garage, not our home garage. It disappeared. What? It didn't get stolen or anything. No. 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 <laughs> the garage. No, yeah. I think you pictures of the garage. I don't know if you have them. Yeah. Well, and I I bring mine home too when I'm not. And yeah. it's nice just to get it out of the way, and it's easy to transport and everything. So I highly recommend the Tacky Cat. I and do it too. Sounds like you do too. Yeah, um, I do too. I'm very happy with it. It's a 12 footer. So okay. I've had I've had five adults and two dogs on that boat with a 9.9 wow. .9 horse. Nothing wow. trucks her through the water like nothing. And I have an eight and a half and I have a two and a half uh, horsepower engine with Scott and me. And it's fine. I mean, yeah. I, I thought that I was worried about the two and a half, but I did the research and they said it. People were saying it was okay, so I went with it. That's the one I can lift by myself, the two and a half. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So 
I don't want to drop that thing in the water. So, <laughs> um, let's see. Where did you go? Tell me one of your favorite places you went on the 380, on the IP 380. Um, for me, it was, um, I don't even know where we were, but we swam with wild turtles. Where were we? That was in the Abacos. We were in the Abacos. Um, Wow. I think of the name of that particular spot. Don't remember. It was down by Tulu Cut. You go through Tulu Cut and it's just south of that. Right. Down by like Pete's Pub and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. Anyways, we swam okay. with wild turtles and that was, I mean, when I say swam with, I mean like we could pet them. You could grab their fins and they Did would. Did you ride them? No. <laughs> Did you but I would pushing them away from me. They're too close. Get away from me. We, so we that, dove, I would say that was my favorite experience. Them. We dove with them in uh, Aruba. Mm -hmm. uh, some, they would get real close and everything. So, And Cosimo, they get huge. So it is, it's very, it's fascinating when that happens. You know, when it something. So, so that was my favorite experience. You? Um. I'm about to ask you your, your favorite anchorage. Favorite anchorage. <laughs> favorite anchorage of all time, or in the Bahamas on the three anchorage. Say out of the country, in the country, whatever you want to do. Favorite anchorage in the Bahamas with a three eighty would have been Green Turtle, I think, just because there was so much to do. Green Turtle and the Abacos. There was okay. so much to do there, and that's where we met met the Snaps, Melissa and Daniel. We met them at Green Turtle in the Bahamas. Okay. And where did you meet um, Matt, uh, Mike, and Steph? Hopefully they're um, watching. I started communicating with Mike and Steph when we were um, staging in West Palm to cross. Um, they had offered us to borrow their car that they had at the time, and her and I were supposed we were supposed to connect in West Palm, and we just never did. Um, we invited them to cross with us, and they weren't really ready. They were still staging. So we ended up finally meeting them when we were coming out of the Bahamas and coming back home. We met them in West End. They were at the marina there, and they were just starting their trip to the Bahamas. So we ended up having dinner with them and, and uh, connecting with them. Did you initially connect with them on the Island Packet Yacht Owners yeah. Association Facebook yes. page? Yes, we did. So yeah. cool. That yeah, so quite cool. a quite a few people um we've connected uh just through Facebook. So yeah. Uh let's see. Um one, one him have... telling you the story of the anchorage before we lost you, the anchoring. Because he was telling you about why we like to anchor versus one of my oh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. Sorry. Well, my my fate probably I'm trying to think of it, it there's a long list of anchorages, but probably one of my most favorite all time events during anchoring was at um I think it's called Pirates Cove over there by Barbara Marina. Are you yeah, with that's that? where I, that's Orange Beach. Well, it's Alberta, but um, yeah, Pirates Cove. Yeah, so we stayed there one night, and I remember being there, and it was just one of those crystal clear nights. We we're out watching the stars, and all of a sudden, all the dolphins came around. They just kept swimming around, and they would be they would they would blow. You could hear them blow. That. Right. And they just kept moving around and you'd hear them. And, and it was, I think they sleep and swim. And that's what they were doing. They were sleeping and swimming, but they were kind of circling that cove. And it was just one of those crystal clear nights. It was beautiful. No waves, obviously no wind, no mosquitoes either. <laughs> oh, nice. Well, was it Ingram's Bayou or Pirate's Cove? Ingram's Bayou is the one right next to Barber's Marina. No, it was Pirates I Cove. I think it's called Pirate's okay. Cove. Yeah, it was so there down was, there. Was a restaurant, there was a restaurant and bar, a little marina there. It, when you go way down in, way down in, there was, okay. I don't remember How there being any, it, yeah, there was nothing there. There was an old barge on the, on the right side, I think going in that was half sunk, but there was nothing in there at all. It was, uh, it was just a great that place. Sounds I think, like, sounds like Ingram's Bayou because uh, Pirate's Cove has Pirate's Cove bar and everything right there. When you first go in, it's just a little bit, um, Ingram's Bayou is just, just east of Barber's Marina, and then Pirates Cove is a little further down east, across from Bear Point Marina. Okay, so, I may have confused I've, them. I've done I, both. I've done I both. think it's I think it's east of Barber Marine. Okay, I'd have to look at the chart now, but it's been several years since I've been there. But that was probably my favorite anchorage, just because of the dolphins and the stars and just calm. You know, yeah, 
Exactly. And it is nice and secluded. It is very nicely secluded back there. Very nice. Yeah. But I was referring uh, to when we got cut off and you were telling about anchoring and the big winds. With Daniel. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we got <laughs> cut off and he didn't finish telling you why we prefer anchoring in this boat versus marinos anyways. Well, yeah, well, essentially, with this particular boat, I find it more comfortable to be at anchor than at the dock. Because currently we're at a fixed dock. And with the tide change and winds coming back and forth, the boat doesn't react as good as it does when it's at anchor. When it's at anchor, it's really? so stable. It, it's so stable. You can't even tell. Oh, big. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's we so were nice out in 36 knots, man. You could not tell you were in 10 knots of wind. Wow. And where did it, you anchor? Did you go to Fort McRae? In, we in went Pensacola? to Fort McRae. Yeah, I think it was um, Spanish Point right there by Fort McRae. Isn't that Redfish, I know Redfish Point? Point. It's Redfish, Redfish Point. Yeah, Redfish and is is a little bit further west. Spanish is the first one out of Fort McRae. Okay. Did you go yeah. back in the little the little cove back there or no? <laughs> no. No. I'm, we as just soon stayed as my right boat's there. in the water, I'm I'm gonna be splashing back in on Monday and I'm gonna be boogieing over there <laughs> as quickly as I can. <laughs> it's a great place. You guys won't be around. <laughs> I love Pensacola. I think it's great there. Yeah. So um, so tell me about, are you, tell me about Maine. Are, are, have you, you love, you obviously are not interested in moving, right? This is where you want to, this is your home port. <laughs> That's our home port. That's a long ways to head South from Maine. <laughs> it is a long ways. Yeah. Um, so yeah, how, how, how long do you anticipate being gone on this trip? Well, we're shooting to be home by around beginning of May. Wow. <laughs> that, woo, that's very optimistic, isn't it? It's a great it's, yeah. it's a what am I trying to say? It is um ambitious. <laughs> it's gonna take a lot of moving. It's gonna take a lot of moving, yeah. There won't be much uh, much playing. Once we get moving though, we'll only stay each place for a day or two and then um uh, once we get going and we get moving, we've, it's very comfortable. And we've already done the East Coast. We did the East Coast from um, Buzzards Bay in Massachusetts on our 380 all the way down. So don't really have any interest in seeing anything on the coast. So we'll stay probably on the outside the whole time and just shoot yes. right up. Okay. And when you when you say all the way down, you mean like to Miami or when you... West Palm. Yeah. Oh, to, okay. From mm -hmm. from Massachusetts to West Palm, how how many yeah. days do you think you made it? Um, I think it was seven. We we went in at Richmond, Virginia, to drop off a friend. That was five days. Yeah, four or five days, and then we cut around Hatteras because we didn't have a window of opportunity to go around Hatteras heading south. Um, so we came back out in Beaufort. We went into the ditch into yeah, we ICW. Took the ditch, we took the ditch from. Richmond, Virginia, down to Beaufort, North Carolina, to come back out, and then we went south, and then we ducked in at Beaufort, South Carolina, came back out at Beaufort, and then went down to Fort Pierce. Mm -hmm. it, it was just weather; it was all weather right. dependent. Weather you know? had us keep having a duck in, so, mm -hmm. um, and then we had boat malfunction and stuff that ended up happening when we were in West Palm, but. All in all, if I had to stay, it was probably 10 full days. About of, 10 days. Of travel. Southerly travel. Mm -hmm. So um, just for, just, I don't know much about the um, the intercoastal on the East Coast. Uh, what is, uh, what are the limitations for masts there? 65. Most of them really? are about 65. Yeah, mm -hmm. what you get north of. Don't quote us on this because we didn't yeah. take the ICW the yeah, whole everybody way. Everybody check it out first. Don't take our word for it. Don't take our word for it. <laughs> I think most of them are right around 65 feet. I mean, we, we were we were able to do from North Carolina. Did we do? Did we Richmond do? to North Carolina. Yeah, from Richmond to North Which Carolina, no problem. And then, With our wow. and then we did the ICW from Fort Pierce to West Palm, no problem. But With that's the only ICW we've ever done. So... Okay. All right. So it was 50 miles. So if you, if you can, you're going to try to stay out and maybe come in to just occasionally anchor 
Will you do any overnights? That, are you going to go overnight? So mm -hmm. you, how many days do you think you'll, are you open to just keep on going? I would do the whole thing in one run if I got bad my way. Yeah. We'll see. It's um, uh, it. So, so my experience going from Texas to Florida, we spent, was it four days? No, it was six. Six days. Okay. Well, we stopped in Pensacola for an overnight though. So it was five full days of travel. Yeah. So after the, so after we had, <laughs> we had a long trip to get to Pensacola because I told you we we're beating against wind and waves essentially the whole way until we were at the point where we were just tired. Now, before yeah. the trip, mind you, before the trip, before I left Texas to come to Pensacola, I drove from Texas to Panama City and then from Panama City back to Texas two days. So that's a lot of car driving before you go off on a big trip. Right. So uh, after I the four go ahead. I meant to put this picture in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And yeah. uh and you were telling me that was his first offshore big fish. Big fish. Yeah. yeah. And here it is you were you're you're cutting everything up. That is yeah. You got blood everywhere, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Close your eyes if you don't like blood and guts. That is impressive right there. We're still eating that baby. <laughs> Been eating like every day. Yeah. Wow. That is that's not, that looks delicious. <laughs> it's good. It's, wa great. it's Wahoo. And I've never had Wahoo before, but it's a very great um it's kind of almost like a steak um right. white, you know, white fish. It's got right. the texture yeah. of it. It's really, it sticks together. It's not like haddock that we have back at home where it's all flaky. So when do you think your next trip will be? After, after, we, get home. after we get home, it'll be next season. So, it'll be November. Probably. Yeah. So we're, well, looking, big trip. we're looking to be snowbirds. Okay. Where are you Staying heading? home in Maine all um, summer long uh, work and then play for the four months of winter and where are you six going months. six months of winter yeah N next year if we have our t's crossed and our i's dotted properly with insurance and everything hopefully the caribbean okay are you afraid that you won't be able to get insurance coverage is that what you're yeah. no no i don't think that we can't get coverage i think coverage primarily the issue for coverage right now is anywhere near florida for hurricane season so our coverage allows us to sail essentially from Canada, all of the East Coast, Florida, Bahamas, all of the Gulf, except Mexico. Um, so we're allowed that that, uh, the, that particular area now. However, we need to be north of Virginia Beach for June 15th. Right. 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 Or we're below Grenada or something. There's a, a place you have to be below when yeah. Yeah. Starts. So you know how it is with owning a boat there's your dream plan and then there's like plan a through z um yeah. the reality plan. changes literally <laughs> when the weather changes your plans change right so um you know dream goal would be to catch up with the salty dogs in rhode island and go to do they go to antigua they go to the caribbean from, they go to the caribbean from rhode island and that would be like dream but November. reality we'll just be happy going back to the bahamas again with the snaps melissa and daniel um are here in panama city um uh, they're working so they couldn't do anything this season but next season they want to do the bahamas so that is you know plan b okay yep or a okay. <laughs> who knows like this is, you just don't know right it's a whole year from now <laughs> well um i know i i interviewed somebody from with an island packet 485 from Gulf Breeze, Florida. You passed that. And uh, and we're going to be having some uh, Island Packet rendezvous here locally for those that uh, can't go to the Bahamas right now. <laughs> so, and it'll be at, probably be at Fort McRae. So cool. I'm, I'm saying that to tell everybody in the, in the local area, in the Panhandle, Florida, the Gulf Coast of um, Alabama, Gulf Coast of Louisiana, Mississippi, we will be having some local fun around here. So, right. <laughs> very cool. Um, 
So I, that's all of the questions I came up with. How about you? Do you guys have anything? This is the big announcement. Like there was a lot of people in your life that didn't even know you got a new boat. This yeah, is awesome. Like, get it's kind of like, right kind of like a surprise baby, right? <laughs> I know. Like, where are they? Oh my gosh. They got a big yeah. boat. <laughs> I've, been, I've been radio silent on Facebook and we just kind of really hadn't shared it. Um, you know, I, I have some health issues that um, kind of hinder um, everything. So, you know, we never know where I'm going to be. So it's kind of like we okay. bought the boat and didn't really know if we were going to be able to do what we wanted with it this season, but we're here. Yeah. Well, health, health things have health issues. Her health issues have uh, made, made it challenging in a lot of ways for a lot of reasons. Right. But it's uh, also made us jump. Right. So, That's why um, we're pushing so we're pushing now. Right. So we're pushing now um, to do what most people would say. I'll do it when, um, because I don't have that timeline anymore so to speak oh, so not okay. to get into too many details but um right. you, we have to you know jump now because you never know what life holds and so we kind of you know um went for it and we sat when we were sitting down and talking about buying our next <clears throat> boat we sold the 380 because we realized that the 380 just wasn't fitting in our lifestyle with the two dogs um, and being able to have company come, our our kids and their spouses, my parents, you know, his parents, family, it just wasn't going to accommodate our lifestyle. So we actually were looking at buying a 440, 440. a 440. We were dead set on buying a 440. We yep. like going to have it, had conversations. I still love them damn things. <laughs> <laughs> He was, just that 439. At, he was just looking at a 439 for sale. I was like, I swear to God. But that is so... <laughs> but but so I've heard this story before where someone went from a IP three eighty to a four forty five. Yeah, so um, but so we had a four four five. Yeah, I think it was so a four four five. Yeah, yeah. But so I have interviewed to somebody Vanessa. with a four eighty five. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. I'm sorry. So no, I'm sorry. So in talking to Vanessa, we went back and forth on the 440. We had one picked out. We were ready to go for it. She's like, "Well, what about a four four five? And and it's like, the yeah. difference. Is that like the center console and the 440 yes. isn't? Okay, because it's the Correct. same whole size as what I heard from my, the last fellow that yes. I interviewed. Yeah, he, yeah. Yes. So we went, we went, you know, into our, you know, we're looking at specs and what everything will do, looking at the size of that back deck um, and realizing that it's, it's nice, it's nice, but it's not really great for our dogs that would need to go potty there and for us to be there with them especially when we're out at sea on a crossing um so we i just said what about a 485 and he yeah. he, <laughs> he said was, no <laughs> no he was like i'm not no like, I, w I wasn't yeah it wasn't even in our it was my fault that we even got the 380 because of because of you, because of your you, influence your made me fall in love and buy a 380. <laughs> <laughs> Which, I, I love that 380. I love that boat. That that boat was such a great boat. I loved it. Was it was boat. such a fun boat to sail. It was so comfortable. I would have another one of those in a heartbeat. However, getting the dogs on and off the boat from the stern was not easy because of the way the swim ladder folds down. I think just like yours. Yeah. Our dogs couldn't get up the ladder. Right. And I'm like, man, they're getting hurt. They're splitting paws, and you know, us trying to wash them Aww. down after we bring them to the beach. They get on, they get in the cockpit. They're soaking wet. Blah 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 blah. It just didn't work. So we so knew that we wanted the big swim, the big platform on the stern for the dogs, and we knew that we wanted a back deck of some sort and moved to a center cockpit because I actually believe it or not, am motion sick, and um, very badly. And it took me a really long time to get acclimated to not be seasick all the time. But Vanessa told us that a center cockpit makes it a lot better of a ride really? for people that you have You heard it here sickness. on the podcast. I didn't know that. You heard it yeah. right here. Well, because think about it. You're in the middle of the boat and you're high, yeah. right? So okay. you're in the middle of the boat and you're high. So you have that center of gravity, so to speak. The pendulum. Right. The way the, way, right. the, way the, the, bow, the way the bow and the stern rock over a wave, uh -huh. the center right. point of the boat right is where yeah. you're sitting so you have a lot less motion in a center cockpit than you do on an aft right. cockpit okay docking it is much easier because really because you know, i'd be I, like all out of sorts <laughs> <laughs> you would think that that'd be the case yeah. but it's it's actually 
at, it's no harder than the 380. The 380 didn't have a um, bow thruster, and this one does, so it makes it much easier. But when you're in the middle of the boat, your visibility in the front is the same as the 380. You just oh, have to yeah. remember that there's, you know, 12 or 15 feet behind you. <laughs> right. Okay. But then you're higher. You're higher. Yeah. So on R380, I had a hard time seeing over the helm and all the navigation stuff that was there and being able to see the bow. I couldn't really see it very well. But because yeah, when you're coming center, in, sometimes that can be a little challenging seeing exactly where the dock begins you know <laughs> yeah so i've never yeah. docked i never docked that boat and with this i haven't yet but i feel more confident that i could because i can see the visibility is amazing it makes sense yeah Nick, you're in the middle of it yeah. right so all well, of those things considered is what made us decide to buy a 485 you, you know what i've heard a lot of is that usually the man picks one size and then he has to go way up to make the woman comfortable <laughs> and so the man i mean if he wants his woman to come along he's, he's got to make his woman happy and i'm glad <laughs> that you did that bill i'm really glad to hear you that's right she ain't happy, you ain't happy. <laughs> <laughs> It's, well, making, it's making life. We've been here for what a month. It's making life so much easier. Cooking is easier. The dogs right. are happier. They actually act like this is home. We can actually leave them on the boat and go out to eat, and they're fine here. Uh, it's just nice. been it's been so much better mm -hmm. for our, our lifestyle. Well, good, good. Well, your story is uh, even though the little bit that you told about what's going on with y'all, it's uh, there's somebody listening right now that says. If they can do it, I can do it. So and just I appreciate do it. you sharing that. I Untie appreciate the you line sharing. and just do it. Don't even, don't wait because you never well, know. Well, even with your challenges that and and I always say the same thing. You never know what tomorrow is gonna bring. So even if you know at the moment nothing nothing's going on, but you never know, right? Yeah, so I'm just because sorry. you don't have a diagnosis doesn't mean that right. there isn't something underlying. So right. And I'm yep. I'm this age and <laughs> you never know. <laughs> the older we get, you know, right? Uh, I'm, I'm too, I'm so this age. <laughs> I got a lot of grains uh, on me too. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're pushing well, you'll never, well, I'm I'm uh you'll never see a gray head on the a hair on this head. Just just put it in that, putting it out there. <laughs> but I'm 58, about to be 59. So I've, I'm a believer in, you know, you got to live today. You got to yeah. get out there and do it. And so somebody out there right now is listening to this and it's finding this inspirational. So I appreciate you guys coming on and sharing your story. Yeah, no and problem. It, Anytime. Glad to share. And we're going to check back with you and, and see how maybe the trip down after you've gone through the West Coast of Florida. But you and I will connect and I'll, it, I want to tell you about a couple of anchorages and everything. And, yeah, um, perfect. and some other things. So thank you so much for coming on. Before, um, before you go, if there's anybody out there that's planning this similar route and would like to come along, reach out you to you, let us know because we're headed south, obviously okay. from Panama city down through the keys eventually and back up the Atlantic side. So if there's somebody that wants to come along, you know, the more the merrier. Yeah. We'd love a buddy boat. It's always okay, better. So Send an email to saltybandon at gmail, and I'll make sure that you guys connect. Yeah. And um, and if and also, um, I upload all these podcasts to audio, the audio version. So anywhere that people get audio uh, versions of podcasts, this won't be on there along with the the, the former thirteen. So whether it's Spotify or Apple or Amazon Music or any, of the, there's 17 that all these salty podcasts are going to. So if anybody wants to listen to it, the audio version, they're there. So again, thank you so much. Um, I appreciate you guys coming on. Yeah. Let's stay in touch. Absolutely. And good luck to you. All thank right. You. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye.